Welcome to a new daily top ask credit video. Today's topic. What movie is so good you'd recommend it to all your friends, but so emotionally traumatic that you'll never watch it again? The Grave of the Fireflies. I'm never, ever, gonna watch that shit again. It's from Studio Ghibli, the same from Spirited Away, sent to Chihiro. An absolute masterpiece for sure, but don't expect to find happy little creatures in it. Yufu fact, Got F was originally released as a double feature with my neighbor Tartoro. Even less fun, they played in the bad order. Fun asterisk fact. The creator describes it as semi-autobiographical, except the film ends correctly with him dying. Asterisk fun not guaranteed. Edit, a few people are thinking this post is a spoiler, but the film opens with his corpse, then time skips back to show how we got here. Spoiler alert for the book and the movie. Correct. The author's sister, adopted I believe, died. At that time she was just 16 months old. He felt responsible for her. So in his semi-autobiography, I think he wished to die with her. But he didn't. Pan's Labyrinth. I thought I was going in to see a cool fantasy flick. And it turned out to be a movie dealing with trauma, abuse, and coping mechanisms. Still a great film, but so gut-wrenching. That scene when the girl's father bashes and kills a man with the stock of his revolver is somehow harder for me to watch than any gory violent movie. Edit, it was a wine bottle, and he was her stepfather. I'm pretty sure that was a bottle, or he just killed more than one person by bashing in their head. And he just kept bashing. That sound. I kept watching the movie, for a bit, but after 10 minutes or so realized I wasn't taking anything in anymore because I was still hung up on that scene. So I stopped the movie and haven't put it on again. That was over a decade ago. I always like to describe it as if Lord of the Rings and Saving Private Ryan had a child and abused the shit out of it. That's a sentence I never thought would be so accurate. The Pianist, I can't bring myself to watch it again. The anger and hopelessness I felt for that man and those people is beyond compare. I watched this last week on a whim. I remembered it being critically acclaimed at the time it was released. I knew it was Holocaust movie so I was prepared for some heavy shit. But boy did I underestimate the weight. This sounds really ignorant but I expected it to be more upbeat. Not in a jolly sense, but more so that the main character suffers through persecution but finds a way to use his piano abilities to bring hope forward slash joy forward slash inspiration to those around him, maybe even endear himself to the Nazis who would let their guard down and open possibility of escape. What I saw instead was one of the most jarring depictions of lives and liberties being slowly carved away. First an inch at a time, then by the mile, until their humanity was gone. His performance towards the ends felt like his last gasp of hope. It was a powerful experience and I almost feel bad for saying I thought there'd be more piano to my girlfriend after the credits rolled. The bit where he tells his sister he wished he knew her a little better. Then they all get put on the train and that's it. Never sees them again. I cannot quite imagine what that was like for people who experienced that. I would have laughed my fucking ass off if I got through the pianist with my BF and the first thing he says is I thought there would be more piano. My grade 10 teacher forced the entire class to watch that during history and all I remember is majority of the class sobbing crying. It was so sad and every single scene in that movie is engraved into my head. Another similar movie that traumatized me was The Boy in the Striped Pajamas Holy. I read the book, Boy in Striped Pajamas. If you think the movie is heartbreaking, the book is really traumatizing. Would totally recommend it but I don't think I can read it again. Full Metal Jacket I watched the very first bit of it when I was in officer training and thought it was a comedy. A few months later I sat down and watched the whole thing. It's not a comedy. That suicide scene absolutely traumatized me when I was younger. It was so well played. Then madness was so incredibly raw and believable. It was so realistic that it messed with my brain big time. Vincent D'Ufrio is in my top 5 actors list, especially after seeing him as the kingpin in Daredevil. I can, and have, watched the first half any time. That second half though, doof. Agreed. I was not prepared for that level of heavy. <laughs> Leaving LAS Vegas. Nicolas Cage is amazing in it, won an Oscar for it. But as a recovered alcoholic, that film hits way too close to home. Good film though. 
Yeah, I remember catching it on TV really late at night one weekend and I stopped to watch it hoping for it to be a NIC Cage film that I could laugh about later. My god, there was no laughing. I had no idea NIC Cage could play in a drama so well. He is a really talented actor. He's been great across several different genres. Actor Ethan Hawke claimed in 2013 that Cage is the only actor since Marlon Brando that's actually done anything new with the art. HTTPSN.Wikipedia.org forward slash wiki forward slash Nicholas underscore Cage hash sign acting underscore style. Guess that depends on how you feel about Ethan Hawke, but being compared to Brando, that's high praise. The Hunt, 2012. A Danish film by Thomas Viterberg starring Mads Mikkelse. That. Fucking. Movie. Things it shows. Children should not be exposed to pornography. Children who are being questioned to see if they were abused should only have that questioning done by a specially trained expert and possibly with potentially a trained advocate present because it's too easy to lead them to a conclusion they think the questioner wants to hear, especially if they think they are in trouble. Note, I edited this due to the several very good points several people said about parents shouldn't be present, some people are also saying best practice is one-on-one -on -one with that trained forensic questioner. Basically everyone in that story ended up fucked up. This is exactly what happened during the satanic panic of the 1980s. Children were asked if they were abused by people who were leading them to say yes. One guy spent five years in prison because a few people thought it was weird that a guy was a preschool teacher. Mads Mikkelse. I first saw him on Habel, and he was terrifying. I loved it. Then saw this film. Man, he is beautiful and his acting is, gorgeous. You should watch Valhalla Rising. The film is indescribable. I'm not really sure it is a film at all. More as if violence was a world with people living in it. Come and see. Wonderful movie, but even more devastating than Grave of the Fireflies, in my opinion. Come and See is a fantastic movie. The first paragraph of Roger Ebert's review summarizes the movie perfectly. It's said that you can't make an effective anti-war film because war by its nature is exciting, and the end of the film belongs to the survivors. No one would ever make the mistake of saying that about Elam Klamouf's Come and See. This 1985 film from Russia is one of the most devastating films ever about anything, and in it, the survivors must envy the dead. Of course it's Russian. Three years into my Russian language and culture minor, I was still shocked at how bleak a film could be when, friend, fucking ruined my life one day. I was waiting to see this mentioned as well. It is an unforgettable thing, that film. For those reading this who have not seen Come and See, the experience is hard to describe. There's something Kubrickesque about the film. It's a slow burn. A confusing carnival assault on your senses and sensibilities. Playful and deadly serious. It's difficult to understand what you're seeing, and there is the feeling that that is intentional. The writers forward slash directors had lived through the time themselves, and it's almost as if they want you to believe that, to them, and those others who survived, that it was almost too horrible to have been real, but that the reality of it is utterly stark and unrelenting. Inescapable. Disturbing and dreamlike. But even this description is deceptive. Reading it, you may expect more than it is, scoff and say, it wasn't so good forward slash bad. Just a confused jumble. I can't speak for everyone. I will say this, though, what I mention is anecdotal. When the film was released, it was heavily criticized, and banned in many places, especially Germany, I believe. People made the claim that it was slanderous, painting the German army as butchers and rapists. It was eventually screened in the UK for a small class, one of whom was a man who had been part of the Wehrmacht that marched through Belarus. He had been party to the things the film portrays. Others in the class asked him how he could be so silent while the film laid these accusations at he and his comrades' feet. He wept, and told them that it was all true. Edit. Well, I certainly didn't expect this to get as much attention as it did, let alone an award. Thank you all so much for the kind words. Life is beautiful. This movie is unspeakably tragic. But it's also profoundly beautiful. The love that the family had for each other gets me every time. Roberto Bigai was perfection in this role. Bogiro Price Apesa. Finally someone mentions it. The movie changed me though. It actually found a purpose in me when I was young. I was able to go from not caring about school, career, life even, 
to being frantically determined to achieve what I wanted in life. Damn I saw it and was like well that was depressing and spent the rest of the night in existential crisis that disappeared when I woke up like I never watched it. We need to talk about Kevin. That was a truly visceral experience. This movie often gets left out of these lists. Definitely well made, powerful movie that's really uncomfortable to watch. We need to talk about Kevin. TBH I found this one really rewarding on a second watch. The first time it kinda just washed over me and was, exactly as you put it, a very visceral experience. On the second watch, after you know where it's going, you see so many more meaningful details and hints about what everything is leading up to and what's going on in Swinton's character's head. Kind of becomes a more emotional and cerebral experience as opposed to the initial visceral one of the first watch. Did you see you were never really here? Same director and equally tormentive, Jokey Phoenix should have won the Oscar for this performance instead of Joker. I found this film so cathartic and painful. As someone who was abused as a kid, to see Jokey, as a handsome bear-like protector, albeit broken, enact revenge made me feel a peace I know I will never experience. It's a painful film, but it has given me so much solace.